Hi everyone and welcome to today's lesson or video on investigating associations between two numerical variables. The key takeaway, ladies and gentlemen, are scatter plots. Yes, and I can tell you now that scatter plots are a huge part of the rest of the course. Uh, you're going to analyze them, you are going to be doing regression analyses and whatever else. So the best thing to do is finish the chapter of these videos, get to grips with how to draw scatter plots and analyze them, and you will be a gun at further maths. Now, if you haven't already done so, it would be good if you could click on that little doohickey in the corner that subscribes you to my maths, uh, maths YouTube channel. Uh, basically, uh, it's the only way I get to know that people are watching, um, and I don't think that many people watch. So if you can, that'd be greatly appreciated. Also, above is a link to mathsguru.com, where all these videos are sorted by chapter and textbook and have downloadable resources, um, and hopefully will be useful to you as well. Now, in a previous lesson, or previous lessons, we've looked at explanatory and response variables. We've looked at how to do categorical and categorical data to compare categorical and numerical, and now we're going to do numerical and numerical. And by the end of the lesson, hopefully you'll know what the term associated is and how to identify numerical data. Now, just for information, if you remember, numerical variables are those that take number values and number value only. Okay, and so the best way to do this, as I say, is if you want to associate uh, between a numerical value and a numerical value, use a scatter plot. Now we've done scatter plots before in previous years, at least drawing them. Now there's two ways to do it, by hand, which you could be expected to do in both the SAC and an exam, and using your CAS. And I'm going to show you how to use your CAS in just a moment. All right, but let's do it first by drawing a scatter plot. Using the data from the Cambridge Further Units 3 and 4 textbook, with permission, thank you Cambridge, we want to construct a scatter plot to display average hours worked the response variable against university participation rate, the EV, in nine countries with the data shown. So first things first, if we remember, the EV goes on the bottom there and the response variable goes up there. And what did they say the EV was? It was participation rate in percent and the response variable was my hours worked. All right. Now, I'm not going to be able to do this very accurately here. I'm just going to talk around the key points of drawing this thing. You will have pencils and rulers, and in an exam, hopefully a grid will be provided for you. But the first thing is you're going to make sure that your axes are large enough for the scale that you need. You are going to write on participation rate. And you're going to write percent, and up the side you are going to write hours worked. Okay, now it's important to make sure these are labeled. How do you now work out where to put these? Well, for participation rate, the first thing I want to do is I'm not going to start this at, or for some of them, I'm not going to start at zero. This one's going to be slightly different. I always tend to look for my lowest value and my highest value for my data. So my lowest value is one, my highest data there is 55, and they are going to be the outer limits of my data. Now, sadly, some people will go, all right, I'll put a one there, and I'll put 55 there, and I'll just put all the other values in between. That's not necessarily a bad thing, so long as your scale now is accurate between them. I probably wouldn't put one on there. 55 seems to be a number that would maybe go up in fives, who knows? So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and I'm going to run out of room. 45, 50, and 55, he says. So we're just going to put 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45 and 50 and 55. Now again, you're going to draw this way more accurate or more accurate. Uh, grammar there, that was horrible. Hours worked, I do exactly the same thing. So I'm going to look at my values for hours worked. What is my smallest value? It would appear to be 35. My highest value would appear to be 53. And again, those are the values I'm going to put in. Now I don't have to start these things at zero. If you can, that's good because finding intercepts makes life a lot, lot easier if we can do that. But either way, I can now do my hours work. What did I say? My lowest value was 35. So there's 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. And so that's going to be 55. Now you can see that my scale's a bit compressed. I could make it much larger if I wanted to, but for the purposes of this video without making it too long. We're going to leave it there. Now, again, I don't have to start that one at zero because I'm just trying to look for an association. And we'll explain what that means in a moment. And having done that, what do I do now? Well, I literally just take my points and I mark them. So 26 along is going to be sort of here and 35 is going to be a kiss there. And that's it. You just put little kisses or dots or whatever it is. 
Having done it, I tend to put a line through it, which will then uh, show me that I've already done it. I don't want to repeat data items or make mistakes. 20 and 43, so 20 and 43 is going to be roughly here. Now again, I'm doing it roughly. You are going to do it accurately. 60, uh, 36 and 38 is going to be roughly speaking there. 1 and 50 is going to be roughly speaking there. And basically, you just keep going through. And that's how to draw a scatter, a scatter plot by hand. I'll leave it to you to finish if you need to. Alternatively, we can use the CAS, and the Cambridge book has fabulous instructions for you to be able to do that, but what I'm gonna do is actually show you how to do it using my CAS calculator. Let's bring back the data. Let's get rid of some of this stuff here. Let's get rid of that graph, which is now no longer gonna be part of the notes, but uh, never mind. So bring up my CAS calculator, you will see it on the main screen there. And to be able to draw these things, I want to use my statistics screen. Now, bringing up the statistics screen, you will already see that my data is pre-populated. Now, being able to put data into this calculator, you're going to be doing it over and over and over again throughout the rest of this course. I would absolutely say that in that situation, make sure that where you see this list one, list two, and list three. Now, I don't have list one here at this moment in time. If I do the default, then it will actually come back and it will say this one. Actually, let's do this. So I'm gonna clear all and bang, there you go. So list one, list two, and list three. Now, the great thing is because I haven't cleared all my variables, I can actually now change list one by clicking in this box here. I'm gonna go and click on keyboard and type the word part. We're going to ABC and then I'm gonna P-A-R-T. Now, when I do execute, absolutely what happens? Back comes my values. Now the great thing about this calculator is if you delete stuff it will bring them back. The problem is if you decide now to go back and change that, say you want to now make it longer and say well I want to make that part rate for example, bring back my keyboard and go R A T E and hit enter. Because you've now got a new variable it's going to delete all that data. So my advice to you is always, always, always make sure that you um, Get that right first or just don't change it. So that was that one. I think I made this hour, H-O-U-R. I may have been hours. Yep, it was hours. So again, clicking in there. I'm going to go down here and make that, put an S on the end. Click on execute and lo and behold, there we go. So I'm going to clear my keyboard now just to show my data. How do I get this to draw a scatter plot? The easiest way to do is hit this button here which will bring up a, a set graph, um, sort of stack graph a dialog box, which you can set and show all sorts of graphs depending on uh, what it is you need to do. So firstly, I'm on graph one. This will gr draw up to nine graphs for you. I'm gonna say, click it on to draw it, and I want to choose scatter. If that is never on scatter, click scatter, but you can see what X, Y, MP plot, histogram, med box, but I'm gonna do scatter. Now, X list. They're saying to you, well, what do you want on the x-axis? What value should I plot horizontally or my explanatory variable? Well, they told me my explanatory variable in this situation was part rate, which I've got as part, so I'm gonna click on part. And my y list is what values do you want me to put on my y-axis or my response variable? And in this situation, I'm gonna do hours. The rest of it, you just leave and you click set. And in the CAS, the Casio class pad, nothing seems to happen, all right? Now, if you're a TI Inspire user, hopefully something has already happened, but for the Casio, you have to click this little button here and say, can you now sketch that graph for me or plot it for me? And there we go, ladies and gentlemen, that is beautifully my graph drawn for you. And you are gonna have to practice this over and over and over again. And so basically, uh, the next part of this lesson is well, actually, there is no more part of this lesson. This whole lesson was just about getting that data into your CAS. Later lessons will start you to, get to find ways of interpreting it and analyzing it and discussing it and all that type of stuff. So we're going to call it a day for this video now. Now, you may have noticed there were no VCAR questions for this one because they all come a little bit later on. But thank you very much for watching if you are still here. If you enjoyed it, please leave a comment. Otherwise, if you haven't already done so, can you subscribe? It's great to know that you're watching. Otherwise, a new video will drop very, very soon. I look forward to seeing you then. Take care. Have a good day. I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye.